This is video four of the Next Level Entrepreneur video series. If you've been with us since the beginning, you'll know that I'm Jasmine Starr, a photographer and business strategist and the founder of Social Curator. I empower business owners to build the business of their dreams and create a life they love. This video series focuses on some of like the frequently asked questions I get on a daily basis. And since I can't like consult for every request that I get, I created this video series as a way for us to connect and I want to help as much as possible. In video four, we've honed into one specific topic. What should we really be sharing on social media and how much is too much? and what works best for engagement. Okay, so what I want you to do is be sure to download the free next level action guide at jasminestar.com forward slash next level to follow along with the outline notes and our exercises. It was kind of to what Catherine was talking about with that your the best performed posts um, don't always relate to business. Um, and on my business page, I have incorporated more personal things and I think people really take to that. But I guess my question is, where do we draw the line if we do? And is that okay that we are incorporating personal aspects of our life into? I, I, I mean, you clearly have a personal brand. Jenny has more of like a business brand. So in my mind, if you are building a personal brand, personal stories are seamless, strict, seamless and people like them, like yeah. of course. We'll talk about where the line is drawn. For Jenny, she can make the decision to go one way or the other. She can personalize her account without using her personality, of course. I would encourage her to still keep her or your team as one of your categories, so every nine to 12 photos is a photo of you mm -hmm. or your team, just to keep it there visual. Um, but she doesn't have to lead with Jenny if she doesn't want to, or you could. It's I, totally- I, No, I struggle with this too. I mean. I have my personal Instagram, which is nothing related <laughs> to my business Instagram. They're totally separate. It's just pictures of my daughter. And, and it should be. And like a piece of me is like, am I willing to let that go? Like, am you I willing to? Uh, well, where do you draw the lines? Like, I guess that's what yeah, we're kind of, kind of circling think, back on too. It's like, where do you draw the lines? Yeah, I just think for the longest time I have incorporated personal things about myself in on my business page and people have really took to it but then there's this other part of me that's like is that professional should I not be putting that on there but it's still getting responded to okay so, it, so for me and like clearly I my brain thinks in like social and metrics and like geeky numbers and I'm like where where is the market talking let's go there yeah. so it to me people are the market saying they want to hear more from you and as you build a personal brand it's seamless like yeah mm -hmm. it shouldn't even be a question the question then becomes how much do I share and yeah. the thing that we talk about is um, what I call like a man on an airplane role if I'm sitting next to somebody mm -hmm. and this gentleman asks me a question what I share with him and I'm comfortable with I would share on social like I do I would talk to a guy sitting next to me about my mom's battle with cancer I would talk to him about my husband sure. about my dog about where I went on vacation I would. Other people would not. Other people would not yeah. tell them that they, ha that, they, that they have kids. Other people yeah. would not tell them when they were on vacation. We all have our own barometer, but what I would tell to a stranger on next to me on an airplane is what I share on social. And that's small. I love it's very that. small, but I, it's also something I'm very comfortable with and I stand with. Yes. And anytime there's like a flicker of, should I? I just pause it. I don't say yes, no in that moment. Sit on it. If it's a good post, it'll be good post. It'll be good yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and Sometimes I cancel a post and sometimes I'm like, yeah, I feel good about it. So man on the airplane or stranger on the airplane. Okay. <laughs> I'll ask myself that. Molly, do you have more questions? I mean, I think I'm just struggling with the personal brand versus my actual business because I do have this blog and I feel like I've pushed so hard to kind of make my personal brand one thing. But then I also have, you know, the PR side of the business. <laughs> So it's like, how do you, is it wrong to have my personal brand be more driven towards the blog as opposed to being driven more towards the PR side of things? Uh, again, this goes back to who do you want to buy what you're selling? And I firmly believe that in your position, it seems like really easy. Yeah, you have your business Instagram and then you need to know who are we servicing on the back end and the content mm -hmm. that we should be creating should be targeting that. And your personal brand, you have so much more freedom. Yeah. You have so much more freedom to do whatever you right. want. And I think and that's why I've grown it better exactly. than the other one. Exactly. Because in the Petri dish, you have no rules. You can mm -hmm. experiment. You can see like, oh, what is hot? And then you can kind of translate that to your over your other social accounts. 
And one thing I want to talk about, oh, okay, you guys give me a little bit of space. Okay, so um, Molly loves her blog more than I, I, more than I actually, I am a blogger at heart. I started my business blogging and when people were like, I'm like, I want to be a photographer. I didn't have a camera. I had just gotten a camera, a gift from my husband. And when I told people that I was going to start a blog, they were just like, what does that have to do? Like, how does that parlay? Like, this is 2007. Now we look back and we understand what blogging did and what it did and what it does. But I will say, and I say this like with all humility, just to show like how allegiant I am and how I know it works. I was getting 25,000 unique views a day to the blog. It was a marketing mechanism and a machine that I had never experienced and got a lot of attention. I know blogging works. It was a game changer. It was revolutionary for small business owners. But then what's happened since then is social media. And social media now within the hierarchy of like brand extension and conversations is ranked higher. And I've learned to divide out my marketing efforts into two components. I have my stumble upon marketing and my searchable marketing. I think that you're so focused on your searchable marketing, but I don't want you to get so caught up because for searchable marketing to work, people must be going to Pinterest, they must be going to Google and searching for something very, very specific. And for those people, I want my blog to show up and you want your blog to show up. But most of the time, the most effective marketing is the stumble upon marketing. And that is where Facebook and Instagram thrives. Because somebody had said, oh, I really liked how Molly was staying at this one boutique hotel in the Maldives. And people are like, what is this hotel? Who is Molly? I need to follow her. I need to go there. That's how I found you. And that is too- yeah. so I don't want you to get so caught up that the blog is like the thing that you need to be pushing. I want you to push it. It should be there. But I don't want you to be tethered to this idea that what it once was could still be what it could be in the future because that's not the game anymore. We talk about the highway. Like if we were like on a country back road with blogging, then the freeway came along. The country back road still works, (laughs) but it's just not as effective. Yeah. So don't get so caught up in your head. Like if you're going to double down, double down on social. Still keep that content out. There's times, and I still very much do this, I'll create a long form blog post, which I still love, and people wanna go deep with me, they will absolutely go to my blog. But then I'll get pieces of the blog and turn that into Instagram posts. Pieces of that blog and turn it into Facebook posts. I test it there, if it does well, oh, let me do a live on it. If I do a live and it does better, oh, I can pay to do have a videographer go deeper with this content so that it lives in perpetuity, I can run ads to it. This is all about just testing the market, seeing where it's going and understanding that long form just isn't the game so much anymore. Still do it, but don't be tethered to the idea like, oh, this is what, where should I be pointing people? Point people wherever you think is best, wherever you think they dwell. And you only know that when we go back to who are we talking to? What is the brand message and consistency? Consistency is blogging, consistency is social media. These three tenets we keep on looping back to again and again. This video was short and sweet, and we got straight to the point. It is our job to determine what we're comfortable sharing on social media, but more importantly, to gauge how our audience is responding. Now, we also outlined the difference between searchable marketing and stumble upon marketing, and the importance of creating blog content that we can also use for social media. This just boils down to getting personal and working smarter, not harder. If you'd like to download the free action guide before we get into the last video, you can snag it at jasminestar.com forward slash next level, where you can also find the first three videos in this series if you haven't seen them yet. I cannot wait to see you in the last video of our series soon. So until then, drop me a line on social media. I would love to chat. You can find me at Jasmine Star.